Why did the great romantic composer Mahler turn to the East as inspiration for one of his last major compositions? In this story, I'm going to explore the importance of China in his great composition, The Song of the Earth. When well-known traveller and explorer Marco Polo arrived in China during the Yuan Dynasty, he not only brought knowledge of Western culture to the East, but also Eastern culture back to the West, and through his writing he engendered a desire within Europeans to engage with Eastern cultures. Mahler had always been fascinated by Asia and distant lands, and when a friend gave him Hans Bethke's The Chinese Flute to read on holiday in 1907, this collection of poems had a huge effect on the composer. The text, inspired by ancient Chinese poetry, evokes seasonal cycles and expresses the beauty of nature and youth, but also confronts death, ephemerality and transcendence the last of which were deeply relevant to Mahler's life at that time. It had been a terrible year for the composer. He had been forced to resign his directorship of the Vienna Court Opera, his four-year-old daughter died of scarlet fever, and he was diagnosed with a heart defect. No wonder thoughts of death were weighing heavily upon him. The poems of the Tang Dynasty had arrived in Europe around 1862, and in 1907, Hans Bethke retranslated some texts, creating a new work, The Chinese Flute. It was this translation that Mahler used for his six texts, inspired by the fresh musical rhythm of Bethke's poems. Although this symphony does not have a number, it is effectively the ninth symphony that he composed. However, Mahler was superstitious about the curse of the ninth recalling that esteemed composers such as Beethoven, Schubert and Bruckner had all died after completing their ninth symphonies. So instead, he titled his composition The Song of the Earth, a symphony for tenor, alto voice and orchestra. Mahler used the Chinese texts as an opening, combining them with Western harmonies and structures, but also employing the pentatonic scale, which forms such a feature of Chinese music. It is this amalgamation which makes The Song of the Earth one of his most progressive works. Four of the six songs were derived from poetry written by Li Bai, who is known as the wandering poet of the Tang Dynasty. Li Bai was a romantic in his view of life, writing of friendship and nature. He also frequently celebrated the joy of drinking, and the first song in Mahler's cycle is called The Drinking Song of Earth Sorrow. In it, the poet speaks of a full goblet of wine, the blue sky and springtime blossoms, and the music is vibrant and wild. The second song, The Lonely One in Autumn, is based on poetry by Qian Qi, another Tang Dynasty poet and speaks of the instability and transiency of life with great melancholy. The music in the third and fourth songs is gentle and very clearly based around the Chinese-style pentatonic scale. We hear triangles reminding us of Chinese chime bells. The words describe sunshine, water, and maidens plucking lotus flowers, bringing us back once again to the importance of nature in Chinese culture. But by far the most poignant and profound movement is the final one, The Farewell, which combines poems by Meng Haoran and Wang Wei, a musician, painter, and one of the most famous poets of the time. This vast canvas of heart-rending music encloses a funeral march alongside deep chords reminiscent of tolling bells. Near the end, the mood becomes more peaceful and the whole piece ends on a lengthy chord comprised of the notes of the pentatonic scale, such a feature of Chinese music. Tragically, the composer never lived to hear the work performed, as the curse of the ninth became true for him too. Only four years after completing The Song of the Earth, he died aged 51, having just completed his ninth symphony. The posthumous premiere of The Song of the Earth was given in November 1911 in Munich. Since then, it has achieved its position in the canon of the repertoire and has been performed frequently in Beijing. 
Recently, a version in Chinese was created with a fresh reconstruction of the original poems. Mahler's musical language in The Song of the Earth is reminiscent of the free form of the Chinese poetry that inspired it. Leonard Bernstein, one of the most famous American composers and conductors, declared The Song of the Earth to be Mahler's greatest symphony. I'm Tasman Little, culture contributor for The China Current.